Welcome to Tidbit Talking. This is a series that consists of spewing out assorted thoughts which arose from somebody who thinks too much, taking in, and generally loving entertainment media by the boatload. These tidbits may be mini theories, observations, or simply jokes. Hopefully, people will find them entertaining or at least interesting. And who knows, maybe they'll inspire others to look at what amuses them in different ways than before. Also, bear in mind that everything blabbed about in these videos are from the perspective of somebody who's experienced every main story bit connected with whatever works currently being gone over. So, spoilers are a definite. However, other works set in a shared continuity will typically solely be referenced in a way that only makes sense to anybody who's also fully experienced those ones up until their same time occurring point. Sort of a coded nod kind of deal. So, while things will be more fun for viewers who've indulged with an entire universe's works, nobody who has yet to do so will get non-experienced events spoiled. Now, with all of that out of the way, here we go. The Robot Masters may have been supervisors of Android-operated businesses before they and their subordinates got converted into devious devices. Classrooms would, of course, have been normally utilized as regular offices by these former friendlies. Every stage select screen shown standard soul stripped screw secured soldier sports a weakness to particular types of weaponry because Light designed them with such fail safes just in case at least one went berserk and needs to be put down by a not crazy associate. Him creating Mega Man with the ability to steal powers is of course his solution to any scenario in which they all go bonkers. Those jumbo jaw jade jiggers that perform platform patrol here and elsewhere were likely some sort of sky surfing sweepers meant to clean out gutters or whatever before Wiley converted them into blue bomber busting bad bots. The shell shield showcasing sharpshooters scattered about almost definitely delivered a warning about firing upon folks who got too close in one way or another before they got converted into instant intruder immobilizing instruments. Something along the lines of you are approaching a restricted sector. Please turn back and let me desire to become a most distinguished force. Each and every bendy blade belching bunker may have served progress pushing product providing purposes before they fell prey to troublesome track transformation tied tinkering. There, of course, would have been plain old bendy machines inside those bendy buildings that slowly sent shark supplies safely to those who needed them before the item releasing mechanisms were converted into full on mini catapults. The health bar replenishing pellets probably function as some sort of fuel for a self repair providing system that utilizes magic resembling science to generate new metal and other miscellaneous robot master parts by converting various air contained hoopla like nitrogen or whatever into every currently missing vital component. On a related note, Extra Lives would be an even more potent perfect part production providing power pumping particle pile to give some kind of ludicrous energy consuming whole body constructing system the juice it needs to reform absolutely annihilated androids at safe locations. Robot Masters seeing their own faces when approaching an additional distance shot is something that can be caused by survival instinct mimicking poor programming put into their brains, making them feel like such items are more important than everything else. Those linearly leaping, lapis lazuli looking lumps that stick to walls probably patched up holes and or other minor structural damage temporarily until maintenance could restore everything properly. Of course, under such conditions, they'd also be acting as markers for where the fixing folks needed to go to work their magic. These nightmare-inducing automated pogo sticks were likely originally meant to compress scrap material so garbage disposal and recycling could be performed with extreme efficiency. The ceiling decorating spread shot delivering turrets probably serve as fire extinguishing devices that work by launching pellets which contain chemicals capable of suppressing flames before they got modified into actual ammo accessing appliances. Mega Man's regular buster doing extra damage to Cutman may come down to its user simply being capable of hitting vital points quite easily and facing down a robot master that's similarly structured. Sir Chopping can't withstand crates and blocks getting tossed his way because such things are made of materials too sturdy for certain headresting blades to maintain their sharpness after a slicing attempt. There's a scorekeeping mechanic in this game that doesn't really appear again in any of its successors. This could be because, during his first outing as the world's super fighting robot champion, Dr. Light had installed a device that measured Mega Man's efficiency as a combat-focused android and removed it immediately afterwards upon 
on getting enough data to conclude all war making focused lab assistant modifies went perfectly fine. Those robot vacuum cleaner slash mine looking spiked floor deals are likely just simple cleaning tools that had brushes replaced with blades. The flying lightning blaster deals were probably originally utilized as portable backup generators before widely weaponized them by removing every safety feature and absurdly amplifying all electricity output. Fading platforms could have originally transported the folks and objects standing atop them along for the ride whenever they vanished for. This double disappearance delivering destination diving would have served the purpose of letting people and machines perform normally team demanding tasks solo. Like turning two knobs nigh simultaneously so explosion preventing gas venting can occur or whatever. Current controlling contraptions conversion into intruder incinerating inventions would of course easily come about by sabotaging simple safety supplying stuff like insulation and whatnot. Elecman's office is located atop the power plant tower, so he would be forced to evaluate each room as he headed into work every morning. The huge crates in Shocking Supervisor's room are probably full of spare parts, so any employee and or workstation suffering from self-fixing incapability can get repaired and nobody has to worry about mass blackouts or explosions. Sir Shocking's sturdiness doesn't hold up when getting swirly sword swatted because Cutman's weapons would have been made with materials possessing great insulation in case he ever needed to slice through some wiring. The long-armed aerial automatons patrolling this formerly tropical area were likely utilized as palm tree ransacking fruit pickers before they got modified into raider ramming robots. Those aquatic variants of the mind-mimicking malevolent machines could have been water purifiers before they got all combat converted. Of course, the plated penguin pretenders were just utilized as cameras to observe their organic counterparts before they were reprogrammed as awkwardly agile aerial assailants. The position permanence problem possessing platform present here may have been meant to help with the construction of more long-term location enjoying structures by giving any employed builders an opportunity at working without wetness. Enlarged, eye-equipped, floating foes firepower was likely meant to only be activated when passenger knocking down capable entities got too close. Their eyes, of course, would work as cameras, so such possible gravity-centered travesties and any other lesser problems could get documented. Pupil play slam would obviously help them see during the night shift. In addition to tungsten transforming temperatures, Kirby colossal charges contain considerable concussive capability, and sometimes smashing coldness clusters can clean wintry messes with intense heat matching levels of efficiency, hence why Electman's equipment easily eradicates Iceman. <laughs> The below bolted blue broad blasters scattered about this area likely were meant to spray employees and equipment with some kind of heat resistant coating so boatloads of energy wouldn't wind up wasted on convection caused crushed component correction. Those fireball looking deals are probably equipped with cameras and various other observation focused tech. Their purpose before Dr. Evil Eyebrows entered them into his altered android army would have been to study seismic activity deep within the Earth's crust. Of course, the flame pillar are just plain old geothermal energy with their protective casing or whatever removed. Building off that idea, those tube-located big blaze bulges would be fueling the facility's main power distributor thingamajig. Flying shark bird robots were likely developed as a security force option for facilities such as this because an extra bizarre scary concept is needed when brigands bold enough to enter such places without permission are in need of intimidation. This time around, the maintenance managing mini machine might have been covering all floors with that aforementioned coolness cultivating coating. The various non-entrance checkpoints can only be teleported to once Mega Man has reached them because Dr. Light needs confirmation from him about whether or not there are other safe areas around. The barrier generated when Fireman uses his weapon could very well be the result of him pulling in heat from his surroundings in order to harness it for self-powering purposes. This ability would of course be very helpful in places such as the area he's located within during this game's event. Iceman's equipment easily eliminates Mr. Melting because it cools all surrounding air quite a bit on the way to hitting whatever it's currently being aimed at. 
Fireman is, of course, not constructed with protection against such conditions, even if the other robot masters are, because Light didn't want him going somewhere like Antarctica for fun and melting an ice cap or whatever. Those crimson jumpy spring deals could be some kind of robotic rodent rooting ratchet that got purchased in mass by Wiley once he realized how good they are at killing absolutely everything. The blue bursting bounty bots that leap out of some pits are probably some kind of minicam spreading upper atmosphere exploration device Wiley altered to serve as automated agitator annihilating artillery. Sniper Joe is obviously just a plain old security robot. He's present in Bomb Man stage because of course explosive stockpiles need to be heavily guarded. Blast barrier bursting balls bust brave blue bombers on occasion. These deals may have been typically used with much lesser amounts of fatality causing ammunition in order to provide fantastic firework festivals for folks. Those Death Star looking structures in the background are likely storage areas for various explosives and any connected components. They would have been constructed with such aggression advertising appearances as a way to make potential pilferers ponder whether or not they've made the right life decision up until then. Bomb Man's battle begins blatantly below the terrain Tin Titans typically traverse. This very well could be because the explosion expertise entangled electronic executive examined all types of new demolition products far away from every other wanted world wrecking worker as his defenses were much greater than the average android and thus he wouldn't be too much at risk if things went awry. Dynamite Deputy's debilitating damage delivery is brought about by Blaze Boy's burning ball blaster because of course excessive heat causes premature detonation and that's very unsafe. The periodical plummet producing platform probably worked in sync to transport mine ore or whatever from one site section to another before Wiley turned them into incongruously initiating invader incapacitating implements. Mets might serve the primary purpose of digging through areas with their tiny turrets when cave in preventing pickaxe precision isn't necessary. Doors normally opening automatically when one approaches is probably caused by them being manufactured with the possibility of armless employees like Mets needing to see their bosses on occasion in mind. Gutsman's greatness gouging gadget is Don Detonator Smoke Supplying Spear. This is because his totally top heavy buff build makes maintaining good footing quite a task for him. Thus the force of nearby explosions knock him down like some kind of crystal chosen champion or something. The magnet beam, which is likely some kind of experimental construction device, would of course have been stashed somewhere guarded by a robot master with particularly strong weapons because anybody who possessed it could storm Wily's fortress quite easily. Unlike in future games, bosses in already cleared stages can be fought again when revisiting their designated area. This is probably because these are all Dr. Light's creations, just like Mega Man. So they all possess the same head-resembling icon-powered self-regeneration as their older brother. If they come back with their original personalities, then widely reprogram them remotely anytime Mr. Metal Hero is caught in the act of crime scene returning. The place Mega Man teleports to, when pausing, is most likely the beginning of whatever stage he's currently tackling. Mega can safely return to wherever he was before the action ceasing happened without confirming it as a danger-free zone because his departure never lasts more than an instant, no matter how long players pursue pausing, since Android Mind can of course operate obscenely fast. Iceman's weapon barely halts ordinary opponents despite going to the extreme of completely frosting everything over when actual flames are involved. This is the result of Mega Man holding back whenever facing robots he knows are victims of permission-free reprogramming but harboring no such compassion for nature's elements. Which he shouldn't, given that such forces are the number one cause of Metal Being's greatest fear, Rust. Wily's fortress was probably some under construction robot manufacturing facility that he took over in order to give himself both a well guarded base of operations and an incredibly sizable steady steel soul.
hold your supply. Seen as no company mandated aesthetics would have to be considered with a professor eyebrow overseeing manufacturing establishment, the different bow colors present here could be caused by simple favoritism. Yellow Devil seems like some kind of repurposed amusement park mascot. His reforming, of course, would normally be done for show and only at an audience safety guaranteeing distance. Sunny Satan struggling with launched lightning would be the result of entertainment bots not possessing voltage handling capacity equaling their combat concentrating computer connected cousins. Mega Man 1's famous pause cause multi hit producing weapon glitch could be generated by the early teleportation system possessing a product testing mist technical flaw that involves it unintentionally leaking extra power into nearby robot master administered firepower. The copy Mega Man's inefficient combat prowess might be caused by that machine producing a rock duplicate based solely on his original role as Dr. Light's assistant. This stage's flooding related passage problem probably came about by the facility Wiley took over not having its plumbing finished yet. That bubble barrier brandishing boss bot was likely the one responsible for supervising said sewage sorting system structural shaping. Since it was produced for utility manufacturing and not combat, there's quite a bit of dirt ability lacking going on here. The pinwheel resembling all energy type replenishing Yashichi item that doesn't appear so much beyond this game is likely made of expensive materials which render true mass production impractical. Similar to the first fortress's final foe, Lemony Lucifer, Wily's murder machine may have originally been something that entertains children at carnivals, like say a giant crane game. That sadistically skull, silly saucer starting shape suffers a lot when whopping warmth wails upon it. This would of course be because Wiley simply gets too hot behind that metal plate while such things are going on. Its insanely imperfect immunity to voltage volume could have come about because aggressive Albert turned about the other corrupting carnival contraption's fatal flaw after Mega Man fried it, but he didn't have enough time to perfectly create charge canceling coating for his self-operated villainous vehicle. Endings are a pain, but all of you are fantastic. See ya.